Hi there, this is Unmation. In this video, we're going to talk about five things you can do to make your composites match perfectly. Number one, match the perspectives. Something looking odd here, doesn't it? Even though we have done all kinds of adjustments to match it, the biggest thing that looks off is perspective. One quick way to match it is drawing lines along the perspective for both the subject and the background. These lines will merge together to a point called a vanishing point. A horizontal line through this point is your horizon for the respective image. All you have to do is to match these points or just match the horizon. And in most cases, the perspective looks perfect. You can move your subject along the perspective by placing the anchor point on the vanishing point and then resizing from it. Keep in mind that this is just a rule of thumb and you might have to do some manual resizing sizing, looking at the cues in the new background. For example, in this case, the doorway. Number two, match the lighting and shadows. Obviously, the direction of light matters. If the light is coming from the right hand side and the subject's light is coming from the left hand side or vice versa, we can easily fix that by flipping either one of them. Another important thing to keep in mind is to always pick elements for a composite based on how hard or soft the light is. A hard light creates a shadow with hard edges and a soft light creates a shadow with soft edges. So make sure subjects with hard light have a background with hard light and the same goes for softly lit images. Otherwise, no matter what you do, no matter how many adjustments you make, it just won't match. After you have picked the right elements, one good way to match the lighting is first taking away the colors so that they don't distract us. We can easily do that by creating a solid gray layer and changing its blend mode to color. This renders the luminosity perfectly as opposed to simply decreasing the saturation. Now with the curves adjustment layer, you can target any area with the hand and make it brighter or darker by just dragging up or down. After the job, you can turn off or delete the check layer the layer that took away the colors. Which brings us to number three and that is match the color. So here are two amazing methods. Create a curves adjustment layer and clip it to the subject layer. Make sure that the symbol of the adjustment layer is selected. Double click on the white point eyedropper in the curves properties and sample the brightest point of the background. Click now and then click on the brightest spot of the subject, an area that would be close to white. Similarly, do the same with the black eyedropper and then eventually the gray eyedropper. And bingo, your color is matched. Make sure to make some manual adjustments to improve the results even better. Another method that you can simply use along with this is make a copy of the background layer, bring it above the subject layer and clip it to the subject layer by holding the Alt key or the Option key and clicking on the line between the two layers. Then simply add a Gaussian blur, completely obliterate the details and change the blend mode of that layer to color and then decrease the opacity. This gives the subject the color of the atmosphere. Number four, depth of field. If the original subject or background has a shallow depth of field, we have to mimic that in our composite as well. In this example, the original background was blurred, so blurring the new background matches the composite even better. And finally, number five, atmospheric effects. We cannot ignore these atmospheric effects. You might have noticed that whenever you look at a scene, the further away areas have less color in them and they are less contrasty as opposed to areas which are closer to you, right? In this case, as you can see, the sky is so far away from the subject and yet it has a lot of contrast and a lot of color. There are many such atmospheric properties that we have to keep in mind while creating our composite. So when the background is just not looking too far away, let's decrease the contrast by creating a brightness contrast adjustment layer and simply decrease the contrast. You can check use legacy, then do it. There you go, fantastic. But it's also making it a little darker. Increase the brightness a little bit. And on top of that, you can create a hue saturation adjustment layer and decrease the saturation to match it even better. And as a finishing touch, of course, you can blur it a little. Now, with all of that being said, of course, these are not the only things that you can do. You, my friend, are the artist and you can do whatever you want. The sky, in fact, the cosmos is your limit. Thank you so much for watching. These tips will get you up and running. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.